Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 6, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. For the PFSense users out here, you probably noted that there is a new version of a PFSense 2.7 if you're using the Community Edition or 2301 if you're using PFSense Plus. We have an update for the client, for the DShield client, if you're using PFSense. So uh, please update it. That way you'll continue to submit logs to our database. And thanks to Yixing who has uh, taken over the update of the client. So uh, he'll uh, be able uh, to make any additional changes as they may be necessary. And Manuel uh, took a look at industrial control systems exposed to the internet. In particular, Manuel focused on HMIs. These are these human management interfaces, essentially computers being used uh, to control industrial control systems. He found about 500 exposed systems. I'm actually surprised the number is so low. I would have expected more of them, but uh, then realized that each one of those systems probably has many, many different actual systems, actual uh, industrial systems connected to them. VNC is uh, one of the big uh, culprits here uh, that is being used to expose uh, these systems, almost half of them, and that without authentication. A couple more details in Manuel's diary. And then DDA again shows how to use his Python scripts in order to do some malware analysis. The latest problem that DDA is trying to tackle is how to deal with custom encoding. If it's not one of these standard encodings that's easily recognized, something like Base64, how do you figure out how a particular uh, text is encoded and how do you reverse it? Well, uh, DDA here uses one of his tools, bytestats.py, to then get some statistics about which bytes are more common than others. And then introduces the idea of uh, being able to uh, work with encodings that use multiple characters. Now, something like, for example, base64, base32 or such that uh, encodes a particular character in multiple characters and how to reverse uh, these encoding schemes. Pretty neat trick here that Diddy uh, shows. And well, if you are into this kind of malware analysis, again, as Always for Diddy a must read. And then we got a new tool to defend against some Wi-Fi threats, in particular a rogue access points. A rogue access point will typically clone the MAC address and the SSID from a valid access point, attempting to trick a victim into connecting to this, well, evil twin as it's sometimes called. The problem, of course, is that, well, first of all, the user probably only sees the SSID, some operating systems before they connect to an access point that they think they know. They may check the SSID or uh, the MAC address of the access point. But uh, Snappy, the tool that has been developed by Tom Neves with Trustwave, goes a step further. It does a complete fingerprint of these beacon management frames. What actually alerts a device of an access point are these uh, beacon frames. They include the frequencies being supported by the particular access point and a number of other 811 related parameters. This then of course can be used uh, to create a more detailed fingerprint of the access point and hopefully distinguish it from a malicious access point. This assumes first of all that uh, the Valid access point is consistent, which usually it is, unless, of course, you replace it with a different model, in which case, typically, the MAC address changes as well. And, of course, also assumes that the attacker doesn't go through the pain to create an identical beacon frame, which is certainly possible, but requires a bit more work. And, well, um, attackers usually don't become attackers because they like to work a lot. Then we got a blog post from Elastic uh, showing an analysis of the latest sample that they recovered of the Rust Bucket malware. Rust Bucket is malware that's commonly associated with North Korea and has been used to target Macs, Apple, 
Malware, of course, is always a kind of a hot topic. This particular sample has some neat features, even though I personally believe it's not really all that terribly innovative. It uses Apple Script to sort of get started, then downloads additional components that are written in Rust and also in Swift. Rust, of course, is why this malware family is commonly called Rust Bucket. For persistence, it's using uh, plists in the launch daemon, which is a fairly common technique in order uh, to uh, gain persistence uh, for malware on Macs. It also then writes itself into the user's home directory into the library metadata system update folder, likely to sort of appear to be a normal script. Well, uh, it also calls itself in the plist uh, system update. So uh, this, again, is all meant to then make it more difficult to discover this malware with sort of a simple cursory analysis. More details in Elastic's blog, including things like, for example, IP addresses and such that are being used for the command and control channel. Well, that's it for today. Remember, next week will be Sans Fire on Tuesday evening. We'll have a keynote uh, where I'll sort of go over some of the things that are new and exciting at the Internet Storm Center. I believe we will be able to stream this uh, keynote and it will be public, so not just for attendants of the conference. If you are attending, well, then please look me up. Uh, we'll have plenty of uh, stickers and such around the conference. So uh, grab one or just ask me for one. I'll definitely have some on me. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.